Hey guys, how's it going? Carter Man here. In today's video, I'm actually going to show you my setup for the Vision Pro as a programmer. So it seems fitting being a programmer and all. And I just want to quickly show before that, um, I have uh, early adopted pretty much every single Apple product that they have invented. Um, I have ones that I've sent sold, Mac Pros, things like that. But I got to be honest, I think this might be the coolest one so far with some caveats, but let's go ahead and get into this, how I'm using this as a programmer. So here you'll see my desk setup. It's really straightforward. I have a 27 inch cinema display. I have uh, Apple mouse. And then of course I have the MacBook Pro. For the most part that worked great for me. So I essentially have two monitors. I have one on the laptop and one on the actual display. With the Vision Pro, you have the ability to have, in a sense, unlimited monitors or views. Now there's immediately a caveat. You can only have one computer hooked up to the Vision Pro at a time. Um, I am actually going to preface this before I kind of get deeper into this video. I'm not going to go deep into the specs and the what's in the box and all of that stuff. There's tons of great videos. I wanted to take this from a perspective of can I actually use this as a programmer? Now we're going to get into the actual fun of it, which is the Apple Vision Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting this on, obviously, and I'm going to switch to the view that this sees. Um, I am going to warn that I'm going to try to move my head as little as possible. One of the things that happens when somebody wears this, you may have seen some other reviews and such, is the slightest head movement will make it much larger in the actual view that you're going to see. Um, and it can, can get a little uneasy. So if you're prone to motion sickness, I apologize in advance. So you can see now that I have my virtual setup here, I have GitHub on the left. Um, obviously not going to log in because it's private information. I have my laptop here. I have access to my entire computer. I can also go ahead and run the, um, the project that I'm working on. And then over here, I have Slack, um, which, you know, obviously, you know, it's Slack, you know, what Slack's for. But what's cool about this is I kind of have this whole setup. And if I go ahead and move my head over here, you see my actual house, which you guys may or may not have seen before. And no matter where I am, my windows stay here. So if I were actually to get up and go to another room, all of these windows would stay here. May or may not be a good thing. Um, one thing that is interesting is I actually lost one of my apps in another part of my house, had to find it. You know, it is cool to be able to dial up the immersion. Um, hopefully this comes through in the demo. I'm not sure if it does. You'll notice that you can't see my house anymore. Uh, you just end up seeing this kind of sandy uh, scape. You know, no doubt this is cool technology, but is it actually functional? You know, so one thing about this setup that I actually really do like is it allows me to have more space, right? I mean, if let's say just as one quick example, let's say that this is my, you know, code window, I can actually bring it closer, put it right over my monitor, basically. And now I have a pretty much to my eye, almost 80 inch screen that I can program on. Now I am limited to this one window. Um, you can't really highlight it, but you'll see the, uh, an old ship photo that I took. That is my monitor, um, in my actual computer. I cannot float windows from my Mac outside of this environment. Uh, at least not yet. Here's one of the coolest things about this setup, at least for me, everybody's different. If I go ahead and move this down, I go ahead and go back into my apps and I go over to Juno. So what's the point of this? Well, you can watch videos, which, you know, shocking. That's what you do when you're on YouTube. However, what's really cool about this, and I don't know why it's now showing that video, but okay, whatever. Um, what's really cool about this is if I was doing some sort of a, um, coding tutorial or things like that, and I actually want to be able to follow along, I can have a full screen in front of me and just very carefully move my head like this or listen to the audio. And then every so often I can go back and I can you know, basically go and see what am I doing or what am I doing wrong or whatever it happens to be. Now let's be real. This setup is about $3,600 for the headset. It's about another, I think, $100 or so for the keyboard and yet another $100 for the trackpad. Um, and then of course you have your computer, which we're not gonna include that because you would need that to do any sort of work. Problem is that, you know, is it worth spending all this money for a view that you can essentially sky's the limit? You know, you can make all your changes and you can not only have just this setup, but if I move to another room, 
So now I'm in my actual office. I could come in here, do some reading, uh, maybe do some research, hang out, whatever. And when I get up, this screen will actually stay right here. You know, this view will stay here. I go back to my mock office space and you would actually see all those windows, yet GitHub in this example would be here. Now, what I've done is I've actually brought this view here for Safari into my space. So why would you want to use this over just a monitor? Now, I think I've kind of explained for your house cases, but there's an additional use case that I can't exactly just demo, and that is taking your setup on a plane. So if I have the laptop, if I have my trackpad, whatever it happens to be, um, I can actually take the Vision Pro on a plane, put it in travel mode, and I can do some work privately, which is actually really important for a lot of the projects I work on and I'm sure that you guys work on as well. You know, you may be working on something that you don't want other people to see. So when you're sitting in the terminal or when you're working on the plane, whatever it happens to be, you're not, you know, your work's not being seen. In addition to that, one thing I didn't touch on is with the uh, AirPods Pro, you now no longer using the speakers in the headset, which I'm gonna be honest, do not use the speakers in the headset when you're out in public, it's super rude. Now this next section I'm gonna call your eyes may vary. And what I mean by that is if you don't have great vision, this may not work all that well for you. Although, like I mentioned, you can get a pair of Zeiss lenses, which use the prescription from your glasses. I use glasses for all computer work, so it was a no brainer to get these. However, the field of view and the clarity spot, if you, if you will, isn't all that large. It's hard to convey in a demo like this, especially when you're seeing my screen because, well, it's rendering the screen, not my eyes. But there actually is a part where it's kind of blurry. And for a programmer, you kind of move around a lot. So if you're a power user, this may not be for you. So all right, I've shown my setup as a programmer, how I am currently using the uh, Apple Vision Pro and whether I'll continue to use it is to be seen. Quite honestly, I'm not 100% sold. Now, I didn't make this video for clickbait. I am actually using it and, and trying to use it more. But for an example, I did some entertainment this past weekend and got a little nauseous. Granted, I'm kind of not love of heights anyways, so maybe watching a person walk a tightrope across a gorge, not the best idea. From an actual computer usage, it seems to be working out pretty well. And what's kind of neat is, you know, being able to be in this room, which is actually our kitchen, I can kind of be with the family more versus my office where I'm kind of closed off. So it has, it has advantages there as well. Price is of course a major factor. Uh, if you're, you know, there's no other way to put it. It's expensive, it's first generation, it has bugs, it is quirks. You know, if you think you're gonna program on just the digital keyboard, the virtual keyboard, you're not. Um, I can barely even type in basic text messages. My wife actually asked me if I was having a stroke because it just, it looked like I was, honestly. You need a lot of other hardware, you know, you need this other additional hardware that I have in front of me. You know, maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. I would say that if you're on the fence, hopefully this video kind of swayed you in one direction. If you have any questions about the specifics of my setup, you know, go ahead and leave a comment below. So as always, I appreciate you guys checking out these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.